Good evening, guys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hey, Adam G, your online inspirational talk show. Guys, we're still on with my Miss Universe 2022 live chat series, and for today, and for today, I am giving you a very special episode. As you guys have been noticing, I have been interviewing a lot of Miss Universe delegates, and I'm so happy to be doing this special content with her and with you guys as well because I feel like I am making history with this beautiful lady as she is the first Miss Universe contestant that I am interviewing face to face. Would you believe that? No more stream yard, no more virtual interviews. I'm really gonna be talking to her face to face. So here she is. We've seen her before. I met her in a pageant event three weeks ago and my gosh as you as you saw we were all mesmerized because she really looks more beautiful in person so without further ado here she is i'm so blessed to be given this opportunity to interview her so please say hello to miss universe cambodia 2022 manita Han. hi manita hi it's great to see you again same Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to interview you despite your very, very hectic schedule here in Manila. My pleasure. <laughs> yeah, so how has it been like since arriving here three weeks ago? Yeah, kind of three, three weeks ago, yes. It's been kind of very, very hectic actually, yeah. but it's fun. It's fun and exciting. You know, to be honest, I really did not expect that you would show up in that um, set of press conference of mm -hmm. another pageant. We were like, we, I was so surprised when you just came in the middle of the press con and mm -hmm. you were announced, oh my gosh, she's really here! Mm -hmm. and I think that was your first public appearance yes. here in Manila after arriving. Yes. So how has been it been like? Well, it was, it was a good experience. I got to meet you, I got to meet other people as well. And some were already interviewing me online when I was in Cambodia and I got to meet them face to face. So it was very good. So how do you find our country so far? So, so far, so, so far the Philippines right now are, I can find it very similar to my country in terms of food and in terms of the people as well. We're very family oriented and also very warm and friendly and we find the same trait in Cambodia too. So you didn't feel any homesickness? No, since really right now, no, 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 no. So the reason why you're here, you know, I thought you were you would only be training for mm -hmm. your upcoming competition. Yes. But I never thought that you would be, you would also be doing all sorts of um, um, trips or sorties around the country. Yes. I think you've been to three provinces. Three already. provinces. So already. how was it like? It was a very good experience. It's my first time working with um, non Cambodian team. So we had some. So I'm fluent in English but the team sometimes isn't so you have the language barrier as well but however since you still have some english in your languages which is very easy for us to communicate but it was a very good experience because it's my first time working with a foreign group yes and philippines and it's very very good because so it was my first time in cebu but then i got it along the way all the time and so I got used to it. You know, watching, you know, there's this pageant account on Instagram that I'm following. Mm -hmm. and that's where I'm getting all my updates about you right now. It's, he's called, uh, it's called Real underscore pageantry. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I feel like he's a Filipino covering it extensively on the ground. So you went to Cebu for, yes. for, for, uh, for a talk or seminar. So I got to love about. yourself. I yeah. got love yourself. I got to visit the Magellan Cross as well, oh, okay. Santo Nino as well. So this is some cultural places in Cebu. But I also got to work with a team with the Iconic Mall, which was very great as well. I got to taste the food. How was it? <laughs> very good. Did you try the lechon? <laughs> yes, of oh course. So I get. I know now that actually you have the type of the lechon there, but you also have another one in another country. In another country, I mean another place. Yeah. And so the taste could be different. Oh, mm. and all so right, I got yeah. to taste all of those as well. Very good. And yet you're still able I'm to so make it. <laughs> wow. Yes, true. Wow, you must have great genes. Mm. 
And then after Cebu, you went to Surigao? Yes, Cantilan. Yeah. So, no, the pageant was in Ilica. Oh, right, right. But in Cantilan, Surigao, we got to meet with, uh, well, did some charity. I was able to meet high schoolers. And also, we got to do a photo shoot on the islands. Oh, that's nice. So, you just didn't come here for, for work, for training, but you got to explore more, you know, you got to explore our country as yes. mm. well. Yeah. So, what among all the provinces you visited in, in Manila? So, what has been your favorite moments? So to be far? honest, I won't. I won't be able to choose because okay, you said that I'm here for training, but also I got to explore the country. I could also say that exploring the country is was was part of the trip. But everything that I did, such as charity, being the judge in Miss Illigan yes. 2022, or doing the photo shoots, it also on ground training as well, because Ooh. when you work. In a foreign country, that's when you understand how getting out of your own limits is like. You know, because I'm limited to Cambodia and sometimes yeah. I can't be able to do all of those, of the things that I have explored and experienced here in my own country. So this is why we're actually doing also on-ground training, but also camp training. Wow. This is all part of it. Mm. And now... Now that those trips are over, you're now concentrating on your yes. on your passion for yes. this universe. So how has it been training like with Sir Roger? It's okay, so it, the, the training I'm having now is called intensive training. So we're packed, but it's very good because I can feel that everyone is actually taking care of it and I'm in the right hands. So what uh, what advice has he told you, or what tips or advice has he told you that you are so far taking the heart seriously? Mm. Well, I trust KF Cam 100% because they, they have been training beauty queens since the beginning mm -hmm. a very long time ago, right? So this is why I put my 100% trust. Anything that Titos will tell me, I will do, to be honest. Yeah. No matter how tired it could be, or it could be in the future, I think that's worth it. Mm -hmm. So he's training you in all aspects for the for your pasarela, for your personality development, yes. even styling, yes. and, all, and all the things that have something so to do with your competition. The whole pack. <laughs> whole <laughs> package. <laughs> yeah. So um, I wonder. It, it, I'm I'm curious to ask. Is, I think you're the first Cambodian queen to train here in Manila, so I Oh, wonder, I'm not. Oh, you're not. I'm not. So, uh, because of the pandemic, we had two queens that couldn't come. But uh, our first queen that came was in 2018. And then we had another one in 2019. But 20, ah. 20 and 21 pandemic, so they couldn't come. Oh my god. So I that I'm the next one. Oh, I need to refresh my memory. So, uh, Cambodian queens have been yes. getting served the train. But it's only mm. now I feel like everything is magnified between Cambodia between your your pageant organization and the, and Sir Roger's pageant count because of how you know okay. of how stellar or formidable you are looking right now as a Miss Universe candidate. So mm -hmm. I wonder, since you know you, you're training here, I wonder is there a difference? Could you say any difference between how you guys are being you are training being trained here in the Philippines mm -hmm. as opposed to being trained in in, in, in Cambodia? Cambodia? So yes, we do have trainings. But of course, it's different because just like we mentioned before, here we have the whole package. So they're taking, out, taking care of everything, whether it is my style, whether it, whether it is pasarela, Q&As, or even the way I talk, mm -hmm. you know. But in Cambodia, we kind of lack of those things. This is why I think that all around the world, actually, we believe that being in the Philippines for training is the best option. Because I know, because here in the Philippines we have a lot of pageant camps, yes. and we attribute the proliferation of beauty pageant camps to our success in the mm -hmm. in, in in the world stage in the world pageant stage in Cambodia. Are there also are we don't there have training camps. camps? We don't. So how do you guys train there? We so don't. But most likely we have agencies that we join, ah. and then we get trained by them. Oh, that's about it. Mm -mm. Oh, all right. So, how do you feel? You know, um, you are getting because I feel like you know it feels like with all the sorties that you did before your buckling win work, right? It feels like you're like a reigning Miss Universe, doing all these sorties around the country. That yeah, to be honest, that's how it feels like for me. You've been doing around the country. You, 
Because yeah, because all all our uh, national GDPs are also doing the same thing. So how do you feel about the love and adoration that Filipino pageant fans have for you right mm. now? To be honest, I'm very surprised because I didn't think that coming to the Philippines, you know, a foreign beauty queen yes. will be warm welcome the way I was or the way I am. So this is very, very, very new, exciting and surprising yeah. to be that warm welcome by everyone. Because when you won your national pageant, yes. you were already, you know, we already know you're so beautiful, she is so beautiful, she registers well on screen, so I should remember your press presentation performance, but then when you finally saw you up close in person, oh my god, she looks like me, god. <laughs> or some, some fans would even say she looks like Celeste. So how, you know, you've been getting a lot, a lot of it. So how do you feel being, you know, being, uh, not compared, but being, you know, being always in one sentence with all, with these gorgeous Filipino beauties? Mm, to be honest, it's, it could be like, let me say that I actually feel um, thankful. I could say to be uh, compared to beauty queens that I actually have titles and that I can look up to. But I also wish that people would look me at myself, yeah. at Manita Hong from Cambodia. Yeah. But this is what I'm trying to do right now. And I think you're, you're succeeding so far. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, and so far you are succeeding. And, uh, and you've been here for four, four, three weeks now for your pageant prep. So, how do you feel that Miss Universe has just announced that the pageant will be finally taking place in New Orleans? Well, it's exciting because yeah. I actually thought when they said first quarter of 2023, yeah. it could have been way beyond January. Yeah. But now it's January, so we have a fixed date, a fixed venue, so it's very exciting. Yeah, and I love that you are really enjoying your stay here in Manila. Mm, I am. Yeah. I am. I feel like you really, you re you've really you really have our whole attention in terms of following you on social media, right? So, compared to your uh, uh, to your other Miss Universe sisters who are in New York right now, mm -hmm. uh, doing your fashion week and at the same time paying a courtesy call to, to, to Miss, Miss Universe, Universe organization. organization. Yes. So how do you feel about it? Because like, wow, I have the whole Philippines looking at me while everyone else is there in New York you know, doing their thing. Well, I mean, does it, I mean, do you guys really keep, I mean, pageant fans can be really crazy about it comparing mm -hmm. you guys with one another as early of as course. now. Does it, does it get you? No, to be honest, it doesn't get to me because I feel that the girls are having their own experience in New York yeah. Fashion Week and that's great for them. I mean, yeah. if they're in New York, why not go to the Miss Universe organization? I will do the same if I could have the same opportunity. But I'm doing something else right now. I'm focusing on training for the Miss Universe competition and having on-ground training as well. And to be honest, I'm having a blast here. Yeah. It's training, it's work, but actually uh -huh. I feel more like it was very much like a trip and being warm welcomed by everyone here it's such an amazing experience to be honest. I didn't think, never thought actually, that this could have been the welcome that I have in the Philippines. Yeah, we're passionate, crazy country. We adore. Well, this is <laughs> this is not related. Like I'm a foreign beauty queen. Why? Why do I get this warm welcome in a foreign country? Because we love anything about beauty. You know, we adore every not just. A Miss Universe contestant, but anyone, it's part of our culture. It's already ingrained, ingrained in our system that we really love beauty pageants. And whoever comes to our country, whether for training, just as long as we see something beautiful, it really uplifts our spirit, our mood. You know, it's really, I can't explain it, it's really part of mm. the culture. Probably we, we got it from, from our colonial influencers before. Mm, maybe. So, but I'm very glad that I got to experience this because this is very new. Yeah, yeah it, could, it, it feels like a preparation for your upcoming competition <laughs> in New Orleans. Yeah, in terms of how you will be probably swarmed by Latinos asking for photo ops or Feature, even, feature, feature. <laughs> yeah, or local facts. But you know, seriously now, the social media, especially now social media plays a huge part in pageants like Miss Universe. Do so you think social media um, influences on how girls are being judged in pageants like Miss Universe someday. To be Nowadays. honest, me as a person and as a Miss Universe contestant, I would say that 
No, I don't think that should be something that the judges should look upon. Mm -hmm. Maybe that girl isn't as has not that many followers, but she mm -hmm. has much more potential than some people that has yeah. much more followers. So why looking only at that? You should look beyond. Yeah. This is what I'm thinking. You know, I don't think that it's the most important to have that many K's followers or that many um followers, you know. It it does mean something that some that people are looking at you and following at your, your journey. But I also believe that some contestants may not have those but has much more capacities as a person. So if it's if it's not the social media following, then what for you? should be the main criteria in selecting the winner. Mm, they should look up, to, to be honest, look at the girl on his own. Who is she? Is she unique? Is she special? Can she be inspired? Mm -hmm. Can she be a role model? I do think that should be the main, the main potential in someone to be the beauty queen. Since joining and winning this universe Cambodia, yes. what has been, I'm curious to ask, what has been the worst thing that has been said about you? About me, yes. Yeah, so you know I'm French Cambodian, yeah. right? So some people doesn't like the fact that I'm half Cambodian. And how do you feel? And being about beauty it? queen representing Cambodia. Well, what I feel about it is that I could say some. Pe so some people doesn't know me as a person, but I've been living much more in Cambodia than in France actually. Mm -hmm. As of now, I'm 24, but I've been living since I'm nine years old. Mm -hmm. So it's much more than I've been living in France, and so I'm much more Cambodian than I'm Fran French. You know, so I believe that if I could meet those people and explain it to them that I'm much more loving Cambodia above my other side. Maybe they could understand me. Do you think, I don't know, basing from your answer, do you think probably it has something to do with our conservative culture? Because I can relate with your answer. Not that I'm a beauty queen, but I've been also <laughs> hearing the same. You know, because we're also, you know, I'm, you know, we, we've all, we've been represented by, um, by, by racial mm -hmm. candidates like Catriona, yes. back, and they are all, they were also getting the same thing when they were mm -hmm. first competing. So do you think it has something to do with the fact that probably we are, a coach, we are, we have a very conservative culture that is probably protective of our roots. I understand. It could come from that too, but also I'm the first be uh, Cambodian beauty queen being half, yeah. being mixed blood, you know, because all the fellow ones before were all Cambodians. So I'm the first mixed beauty queen holding the title of Miss Universe Cambodia. So. Sometimes pe people react differently to changes, yeah. you know, yeah. and that could that, that is understandable to be honest So if they need time, this is fine. Yeah, sometimes yes. change is good Sometimes yeah. change is good. Sometimes people doesn't accept the change, but it's okay. Yeah, it's you know, especially everyone if, has opinions Especially if we think about the same, there's nothing constant in this world but mm -hmm. change, right? Yeah So, yeah, so Now that, you know this universe is just three months away. Yeah, the date is just getting getting in the urge. January fourteen, mm -hmm. and we're in the end towards the end of S September. What are you looking forward? Oh my god, I'm so, so excited to be honest. So we have we have to 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 do a lot of things in a small amount of time, but I'm so excited for it. Yeah, on a scale of one to ten, mm. as early as now, mm. how prepared are you mm. in I winning? Think <laughs> By the end of my training, I'll be up to 10. <laughs> so I could say that now. Well, mm. That's nice. So uh, as, you know, as one of my last few questions, you know, you said earlier that you know, you're the first uh, biracial mm -hmm. Cambodian woman to, to represent your country. So having that said, what legacy would you like to leave behind? Well, Miss Universe Cambodia. I understand. So yeah, I'm a mark of change in Miss Universe Cambodia 2022. As just you just said that I'm the first mixed Cambodian blood here. But also this is the change. The change that I'm making here is also making every pageant fan in Cambodia look up to me as well. So I'm being their role model or inspiration right now. And what I want to let them know is that it is very important that change is good sometimes and it's normal but it's also a good a good thing for them i, w I will say yeah 
I especially come to think of it, I just realized now, you know, this universe is all about inclusivity and mm -hmm. diversity. So diversity. Think, so you know, these two words, inclusivity and diversity, but is it really helping agents like this universe? Or do you think it's just a fad that probably will just, you know, be forgotten in the long run? Yeah, I understand. Sometimes people look beyond those, right? So I think that Miss Universe as a whole is all about inclusivity and diversity, just like you said. So we accept people from every background, no matter what. In fact, they just put it the rule of yeah. accepting married women and women with child, which is all about inclusivity and diversity. So why not? Yeah. Mm. So on that note, you know, I can't wait for your for your third in this universe very very soon. Yes. Can you share to us any things as early as now? What mm. you're doing your account, even the call or cannot, cannot, cannot. What kind of cannot 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 cannot. <laughs> it's better for you to see on stage or during the competition, believe well, me. That's, that's I know, but it's gonna pass so fast. So thank you so much for <laughs> doing we will wait for all those that mm. you, for all those things that you said. I can't wait for the outcome of your training here in the Philippines. For sure, Sir Roger is making sure that there are no stones unturned when it comes to your training and preparation for Miss Universe. So, you know, I, you know, I never thought you're this good in English. Thank you. Yeah, to be honest, yeah, I you surprised me in in this interview. I was like. I did not expect you would be this good, to be honest. I'm not pulling your leg up. I'm not oh, really no. pulling your Don't leg. Worry. <laughs> yeah. So I never thought that you're good you're good in English. So have you been this fluent even when you were younger? No, so actually I've learned English in high school. Oh. So in my high school I had it was it wasn't optional, it was a must to learn English. So I had that in the curriculum. And we had to choose another language as well. So we had English at least three, four, five times. But that, you know, when you learn a new language, all you have to do is practice, practice, practice the language. You have yeah. to talk, you have to speak, right? Read, speak a lot, listen to it a lot. And so I didn't get that much in high school, but mm -hmm. I did have the basis, you know, of English. So I only got that fluent when I went to college because my curriculum was in English and not in French anymore. Uh -huh. So it was a total change, 300 uh -huh. degrees change. Yep. So but that's how I actually got to practice more English. So it was, I feel like it was a good preparation training for that's you to, good. for you to be in Miss Universe. Yeah, did you see uh, that coming? Uh, no, 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 no. That this could so, serve you in a good stead. Uh, no, but actually I do think that I'm a very open person. So I really like to actually learn all the time. So actually uh, changing from French directly to English from in a few months yeah. only because you graduate and then you just start college. It was kind of challenging because I, I would have said I was actually scared and afraid of it because like could I actually follow the teachers? Could I actually understand? Could I actually do this and do that? Will I ever graduate just yeah. because we're changing language, you know? There's always that. But then when I got into my first year, it was the adjustment period was a few, the few yeah, months few in months. the beginning. But then it just went along. So I think that was very good. I'm very proud of myself to yeah. be able to do that, you know. And yes, now it's serving me as in my journey and everything. So you know, I'll work I reckon it. if if in, you can work here or stay here in Manila in the not so distant future for a modeling career because you can really get by just because you're so fluent in English. You want me in Manila now? <laughs> <laughs> Manita in Manila. Oh. Manita in Manila. <laughs> yeah, but seriously, my point is, you know, this could really, you know. This could serve you well for Miss Universe, especially now that they've been championing girls who's really good when it mm. comes to this department. Someone who could really articulate her thoughts and values in front of the judges. I'm very grateful actually for the opportunity that my parents gave me to have this kind of education, you know. Because without English, I do know that it's kind of hard to communicate, especially when you're in a foreign, foreign country. country. So having, you know, my knowledge in English here in the Philippines really helped me a lot. You know, like now, we're yeah. conversing in English, you know. Imagine I was conversing to you in Cambodian. I'll never get See? by. <laughs> so that, that, that would be difficult. It's not yeah. that we couldn't do it. We could. More difficultly, but we still could. 
But you know, again, I'm grateful for being able to have this no language barrier. You know, you know I'm really enjoying our interview, right? And it's my wish that, it's my hope and wish that whoever the preliminary judges will be for the pageant will have the same feeling as I have with you right now because you know you really preach since the start of this interview since getting to know you and meeting you three weeks ago you have this kind of beauty that is so warm and relatable it's not Thank intimidating <laughs> and if we're yeah I'm not pulling your leg yeah <laughs> just looking at just now that I'm seeing you up close and personal yeah you really have what it takes you have the potential you know as early as now, so as early as now, my last question, why do you think you should be the next Miss Universe? Mm. Spicy question, huh? <laughs> <laughs> why should I be the next Miss Universe? So Miss Universe is all about women empowerment. However, so we are all role model and want to be an inspiration to our fellow people that are actually looking up to us. So. I do believe that in our society we have a lot of issues that we should actually address and this is where I think I could be someone who makes changes. I won't make changes in our society because I want our society to be better. Because we could do better if only we address things, issues such as miscommunications or such as diversity and inclusivity uh, as well. So. I just want to make the world a better place, and I hope so that I could do the same for Gosh, everyone. Gosh, listening to you sounds so convincing. <laughs> I never thought you are so, you are this eloquent. Thank I was in more training with Sir Roger, and we finally get that death that Miss Universe wants to in the winner. <laughs> so, good luck. Thank you. And congratulations in advance. I want Cambodia, I want your country <laughs> to finally place in Miss Universe, and you could be that person to finally put your country in the pageant map. So thank you so much for allowing me thank to you. interview. I really had fun getting to know you on a deeper level. So I hope this won't be the first and last time that I will I will be interviewing you. I really, really, really have high hopes that you will be the first ever Cambodian winner to or representative to place or if not win this whole thing. So God bless you, Monita, and hopefully I can see you in Really yes, I can't wait. <laughs> thank you very much. So before we end, I would like to thank Sir Roger and the National Director of Miss Universe Cambodia, Sir Roger, for allowing me to interview, for making this interview possible. Marami pong salamat sa inyo. All right, thank you guys, and I hope you had fun uh, listening to my interview with Manita. God bless you guys until my next video. Bye.